to talk about the main thing we need to know because we always kind of check up on this. We want to make sure we check up on the comedy mothership to see if they're following the big brown and rinks. Have the comedy mothership decided to follow the comedic giants that are big brown and rinks? Do they follow Brendan Shaw or Brian Callan? That's the main thing we want to know now because this is Joe Rogan's first comedy club. Um, the first probably of many, who knows, but definitely one that's going to start a trend if you've seen what the news regarding Red Band and his comedy club that he's setting up over there in Texas also. And, you know, with Joe Rogan being essentially a kind of like the gatekeeper of comedy, the sort of de facto Jay-Z type figure, Oprah figure for him to be, you know, having this club and for them to be ordain you as worthy enough to perform on that stage is a big privilege and a big honor. So with some of the guys who you'd imagine to be close friends with, with Joe, you'd imagine they'd be also featured and they'd also be followed by this club, but they haven't. Now, I'm going to shoot these guys some bail. I'm going to shoot these guys some bail. And I'm going to say, it seems like from what I've seen online, that the number, because again, the number keeps going up. So before, I think it was like 136. Now they're following 151 people. I feel like the more shows the Comedy Mothership does and the more people they invite, the more they follow. So if you perform there, the, sh the place will follow you. It feels like it. Whoever's handling social media. So maybe this isn't really an indictment of whether or not you're in the in club or not. It's more so an indictment of whether or not you play there or not. Or you're due to play there soon. Maybe. That's only bear I'm going to shoot them. But anyway, let's, enough of me copping please for these guys. Let's actually see if you click on following whether or not the Comedy Mothership or Comedy Mothership is following Big Brown or Flipping Rinks. So we've got to keep loading it up and roll it all the way to the bottom and we need to see if they are following these guys. Me personally, I don't think so to be the case, but, you know, it's just a funny thing because we know that this is probably eating away at Brendan and Brian, even though in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter, especially if you're Brian Callan. If you're Brian Callan, you have to be thankful that you've got a career anyway, especially after those allegations. You know, most people would be absolutely sunk and their career would be absolutely over if that was the case. But because these guys have podcasts and whatnot and they're able to kind of create their own content, there is no way to get really cancelled in a really legit way. So it kind of makes life a little bit easier in that regard. But as well, we all know that these guys are Joe Rogan's friends anyway to begin with. So sooner rather than later, they probably will get invited to, to perform there, but just not now. It's not a bad thing, but just, you know, kind of is what it is. So it, the fact that they're probably all kind of, you know, annoyed and they feel like they should be performing there is really dumb. And I think, I won't say I'm grateful, but it's just kind of short-sighted because eventually they will perform there. But these guys, you know, they kind of want everything. So let's see anyway. Let's go control F and see if they're there. Brendan Shaw. Nope, still nothing for Brendan. We see a Brent, someone performed there. No Brent. Let's see Brian. Is Brian there? Oh, nothing. What do we see for Brian? Anything for Brian? Let's get let's get this guy off of the screen. Anything for B Y R A? No, anything? Zero. Bry, zero, nothing. Let's see for Christy. Crystalia. Nothing for Christy. And you've got Christy Comedy, Chris Stefano, but we don't have any Chris Leers. And let's see if we've got the the most bitter hater man in the comedy universe ever, Eric Griffin. Let's see if Eric Griffin's been followed down there. No, no Eric. No Eric. No Chris, no Brian. Um, let's see, Sam Tripoli's on there. And I think I checked that before. I think Sam Tripoli is on there, actually, which is hilarious. Um, Sam Tripoli definitely, because he got followed. No, Sam Tripoli hasn't got followed, actually. My bad. I thought he did. We've got Sam Talon. We've got Sam J Comic. We've got Sam Preckett and Sam Morell, but no Sam Tripoli. Maybe he's, maybe he's listed as something else on there. Who knows? What's his thing? What's his name? What's his thing show called again? Uh... I forgot, what's that fucking... Is it tin foil or something, right? It's tin foil. Maybe it's on a tin foil. Is it tin foil? Is he there? No, nope, he's not there either. So, they are not there. They are not there. But anyway, let's check what's happened so far. Over there, what they have recently, since the last time I checked on the show. Um, they've had a loads of Joe Rogan and Friends show. Christina P has performed there. Andrew Schultz was there. Brian Simpson was there. Tony Hinchcliffe is everywhere, and he's the main guy, isn't it? Tony Hinchcliffe, Tony Hinchcliffe, Red Band. Uh, let's check some other pictures here as well. <clears throat> See what's performed. Um, let's see here. Um, the Mothership got a little fragrant last night with four sold-out shows and an amazing night with roast battles. 
There's Andrew Schultz performing there. Oh, so he brought these guys. Bloody hell, man. <laughs> if you're Brendan. <laughs> Doesn't Andrew Schultz live in New York? Or, or, is he, or is he moved to LA? Last time, what was it? Was there Miami? I don't know. From last I checked, Andrew Schultz lives in New York. So Joe invited Schultz to come over to Austin, fly over. Let's let's run with the conspiracy. Or let's run with the narrative that he he paid for their flights. He paid for all their flights to come out and he booked the entire flagrant cast to do comedy at his club before Brendan and Brian Callen. Oh, that's got to hurt, man. These guys are all from New York, I swear, right? Um, there's Joe performing at the show. There's Tony Hinchcliffe. Uh, Duncan Trussell. Brian Simpson. That guy from Kill Tony. What's his name again? William F. Montgomery. Who's this guy? Is that, is that that Kim guy, right? Oh, no, it's not. Jason Cheney. Okay, my bad. I thought, you know, all Asians look the same. Insulting racist. I'm sorry. Let's continue. Uh, um, who else is there? Again, I don't know who that guy is. Who's this guy? Brian Moses and Tony Hinchcliffe. And another person here. Who's this? Oh, look, Derek Poston. And flipping, um, it's saying, what's that? Uh, uh, um, Esh, Eshan Jamad. The funny thing about these two guys is that if you know your Brendan Shaw law, you will know that these two guys were the writers, the main writers for Brendan when he was doing You'd Be Surprised, that kind of era around King and the Sting. So imagine this. Imagine, 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 imagine. The writers of Brendan Shaw's content and guys that kind of knew Joe Rogan only because of Brendan Shaw have now been invited to the comedy mothership before Brendan and Brian have. That's really, really sad. But also, I think it's a good thing because what it does show is that even though you can be a lick to Joe Rogan and you can do as much as you can to kind of suck him off, what he does really rate more than anything is stand-up comedy. Are you funny, yeah or not? And if you're funny and he respects your comedy, he's going to put his arm around you and prop you up. Yeah, yeah, big up, Richie, in the chat. Big up, bring up. Um, he's going to definitely, you know what I mean, he's definitely going to do that to you. And I like that about him. He has the ability to let people suck him off and enjoy it. But he also has the ability to differentiate between people sucking him off and also people that are actually good at what they do and promoting them and giving them a push. Because one thing that I've liked about what I've seen so far, the comedy mothership, I haven't seen a lot of Joe Rogan on the Instagram even. He's not featured everywhere. He's not kind of front and center on every single post. It feels like he's really trying to build a community and trying to take a step back. Even though he's his club and he can perform there, he's still taking a little bit of a step back. I think that's really cool to see because I said it before to somebody else, actually, on another podcast I was on the other day, that I think that if anybody else, because again, say what you want about Rogan, but I still think he's probably the coolest kind of billionaire close to guy that we have in, in culture nowadays in terms of being pretty even killed and not that annoying because i feel like if you gave everybody anybody else in stand-up comedy the power and the influence and the wealth um that flipping rogan has they would go crazy you already see how tyrannical some of these guys are with a tiny bit of fame just imagine if they had rogan level of fame rogan level influence rogan level money and wealth and whatnot and respect and whatnot in the industry how they would be they'd be unbearable so he does a good job of kind of managing that he's getting a bit weird nowadays because you know he's getting older he's becoming a little bit more conservative he's becoming a little bit more grumpy he's becoming a little bit more irritable like that recent podcast with um um dr huberman was really embarrassing it felt like he was you know really being combative with him for what no reason maybe woke up on the wrong side of the bed but in general i think rogan has a good way of calibrating his personality and not being annoying all the time and kind of being you know not an annoying rich guy kind of being somewhat level-headed and chill he does a good job of it and clearly um you know he's kind of a fun to be around but yeah I, the, the club looks sick um let's see another picture here um joe joe i think saw the people taking the piss out of him with that hoodie he hasn't worn it again since, has he? Remember that really long skirt hoodie thing he wore? I think he got insulted and ripped online and clearly he does read the comments or somebody reads them because he hasn't been wearing them again. Much nicer hoodie this time. So thank you, sir, for not wearing that skirt thing. you got Christina P here performing. Do people here think Christina P is funny? Um, I think she's, again, she's funny on a podcast. She's not as good now in your mom's house because your mom's house has gone to shit. But her stand-up, I don't find funny at all, personally. Um... 
I don't find it funny at all. But I still think she's one of those people that is probably funnier in person. I think if you were in the room, I think she's going to make you laugh, which is, again, that's something that I've kind of noticed a lot of these guys prior to like, I don't know, there's, maybe a podcast has changed it, but I feel like a lot of these guys, I'm, I'm going to have to make a review of another, I watched a couple of specials over the week of a show. I'm going to review a few of them and put them up on the, on the flipping channel. But I feel like nowadays, I asked a question before about the Burt Kreischer thing. Like, I wonder who they're doing specials for. Because I feel like specials don't really translate nowadays to like watching them on video. Very rarely do they translate. And I wonder, are they making specials as like a business card to get more offers for things later in the future? Are you doing a special for your fans that are going to be there in person? And then you're kind of double dipping by recording it and just putting it out and hope people like it or not? Or are you doing it to entertain? the? Because I, I don't think you can make a, a stand-up special that can entertain people in person and also watching it on a laptop because majority of people are going to be watching it on their phones or on their laptops, on their computers, or maybe on a, on a projector on a TV, but you know, whatever, they're going to be doing other things while they're watching it. They're not going to be locked in listening to it or have their phone in a flipping, you know, in a bag while they're doing it. They're not going to do that. So I feel like who are you really trying to, you know, make that for? It must be a weird thing. And again, a lot of these comedians also are just unlucky because they happen to be really funny on podcasts, but they don't have to be the same level of funny on the stage. Or maybe they are in person. Because I said prior to before, I went to the Laugh Factory the last time I was in LA in like 2017, 16, whatever it was. And I saw Chris Delia. And at that time, I didn't think it was funny. But I have to admit, I was absolutely bending over myself, you know, pause when I saw Chris Delia perform because he was really funny in person. He was, especially pre-cancellation, he was really, really hilarious. And I didn't find him funny at all. I found the voice thing he did really corny. I found that whole physical thing he did really odd. I didn't really like him in the slightest. But when I saw him in person, I kind of got the hype a little bit. I was like, yeah, this guy is actually... A murderer with a capital M. You know, he might murder, you know, some underage girls, but you know, on stage, he's pretty decent. And I think a lot of these guys, I think, don't really show their best self on specials. I think a lot of them are way funnier in person, probably. Um, anyway, continue on. You got again Andrew Schultz here. Good outfit, to be fair. He looks really nice in this outfit. I'm not gonna lie, I like that. Um, you got Ron White there continue who else is on there <clears throat> Tony Hinchkiff again that's a very very interesting outfit let's say that <laughs> uh, William F. Montgomery again David Lucas um, who's that Derek Post I reckon Rama is everywhere isn't it oh Thingamajig what's his name Um, the nice guy Ryan Sickler that's nice he got to perform on there that's a good thing to see the good guys do end up and there's some new guys right you got who's this Um, someone called v Riviera uh, Mark Gagon who's I guess from Flagrant Casey Rocky I don't know who that is Dylan Racel don't know who that is and his son Jamad the guy from used to write for Brendan back in the day but yeah big up man seems like a lot of a lot of interesting people were out there. Again, not to be that guy, but Christina P's face here is giving a lot of Brendan Shaw in it right now. You know, Brendan's on King of the Sting. He does that. He does that kind of like that that chipmunk face. What's happening here? Is this? She's got a little bit of Brendan Shaw going on there a little bit. Christina P. Is this work done? Is this just very smooth skin? What's happening here, Christina P? What's happening here, my lady? It's a little bit. It's a little bit Brendany. There, yeah, big up her. Christina P is there. <clears throat> Christina P and friends obviously included Tom, husband. <clears throat> right, look at his hands. You can tell someone's skinny from their hands. Look at that, Tom's hands. Bloody hell, mate. Close all the weight. Well done to him. Tom looks fantastic. Um, Tom was there. Imagine if it was like Christina P and friends and she didn't book Tom. That'd be hilarious, isn't it? Imagine your own, <laughs> you don't book your own husband. But yeah, Ron White and Tom. Sorry, pardon me. Um, I think I remember seeing a clip somewhere where I think Red Bar said that he claimed responsibility. Yeah, I think Red Bar said he claimed responsibility for how Tom's dressing now because I think Tom was losing a lot of weight, but he wasn't buying clothes that were fitting him. Now it clearly looks like he's got a stylist or he's going out and buying newer clothes to kind of match his body and stuff. It was just hilarious if that's the case. <laughs> if Red Bar got Tom to go buy a new wardrobe, that's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, he was looking way, way, way better now. So big up Tom Segura. He, wh whichever way he got to it, he got to it, innit? Regardless. 
um, Ron White there looking way better and healthier. David Lucas looking like an absolute unit. Um, Tony Hinchcliffe again, trademark, you know, shirt, a bunch of comics. So I don't know who are these guys. Um, Ryan Joseph. Again, this is pretty cool. All these people that are, are, I guess, unknown to me, but I guess they're really good. Ryan Joseph, Derek Poston, this guy called Hunter Duncan, and Essan, Essan Jamad again. And who else is on here? Who's this guy? Keith Ray Live. Carl, who's this? Cover, who's this? Covery. Who's Covery? Covery? I don't know. Covery. Um, Casey Rocket and someone called Creamery. Maybe it's an open mic thing. I don't know what you're sure. Take pictures of the crowd and shit. Nice. Good lighting here. Shines good. You're not getting me sitting in front of this. Look at them. People drinking liquid death and whatnot. Nice. Good. Sponsorship. Oh, imagine the sponsors at the comedy mothership, mate. The bank, the money Rogan's probably making off this is probably nutty. You would assume so, innit? And this picture is also new, right? Who's this? This looks like it's um Yanis Pappas and Tim Dillon. Fucking hell, Tim. That body is wild, isn't it? It's just like all the weight goes to his midsection. I know for me, all my weight usually goes to my face and my ass for the most part. That's where my I usually start seeing it. My face and my ass are usually the most places. So when I do end up losing weight, I start losing my flipping my Megan the Stallion bum and I also lose the chub on the face. But for some reason fucking um tim dillon's is just the face and the body but the arms are somewhat skinny and the legs are as well it's like he probably might be a 34 waist it wouldn't surprise me if he's a 34 waist or something but the it's, he's got like a body of an alcoholic where he's not he doesn't drink he's been sober for a long time tim so this is just pure gluttony <laughs> that's the thing that's funny he was he's been sober for a very very long time i think it may be more than 10 years so this is just pure gluttony only gluttony only just food fuck me it's gone all to here not on his legs not on his arms but yeah um yannis papas he's made yannis papas look look like a fucking look like a skinny mini but yeah big up tim um what's the caption here da, 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 da. also i feel like tim didn't podcast has gone back to flipping the level it was before i think he had a bit of a lull when ben avery left but i feel like it's gone back to the standard it was prior the patreon and the normal part again i may be in a minority here but i love tim dylan's podcast i always listen to it all the time it says that Janice pappas and tim dylan took over the mothership um i will see they're calling it the mothership now because i was calling it the mothership but it's called comedy okay cool there we go that's the kind of the name the mothership but they had to put comedy in it because i guess for like an seo purpose so it's basically called the mothership um last night not only did it sell out fast the sell out fat man they both popped into the open mic crew show as well okay nice to dylan trademark polo there yeah it's papas i don't know who who's this guy uh riviera does he have did he get his lips done I don't, I don't know jesus um cool i don't know who these people are i'll pick up them regardless who's this guy um jayla who's that jayla jayla jay larson jay larson i guess and i guess eric person performing as well perform introducing people so chill cool man it's looking good it looks like a lot of people are there enjoying what they're doing having a good time and you know brendan and brian are somewhere crying into their flipping into into their glass of liquid death right upset that they're not getting booked to these places but hey the good thing about joe it looks like he's actually booking people who are actually funny to perform his Tim Dillon, <laughs> He's from TikTok, giving up for Nate Mika! What's up, guys? How are you, buddy? So much fun, all right? It was my time. I'm going to bring up the next comedian. You see him on Kill Tony, the club favorite. Everyone, give it up for Ty Rivera! Okay, you get the gist. You get the gist. Not being followed yet. Who knows what's happening? Who knows what's happening? Who knows what's happening over there? Who bloody knows? 